Hey, this is Scott, the record selector. And I haven't done this in a while, but uh, I'm going to go through a few of the better pieces that I've brought into the collection since the last time I did this. Uh, so it's probably been maybe a couple of months since I've done it, and I've gotten a lot of records since then. So I'm just kind of going to go through the cream of the crop. So first up, I found this TLC. This is a 2012 reissue of Crazy Sexy Cool. I don't know that I uh, put this in any other video. I don't think I did. So uh, not really my kind of music. In 1995, 94, 95, you couldn't get away from this. It was everywhere. And uh, so now it's here in my collection. I don't know that I've put that up on the record selector or not. I may put a few pieces from it in there. Uh, like Again, it's not really my kind of music, but it is an important uh, album in uh, 90s music history. So Then I got the Flesh Tones, uh, Roman Gods. This is some pretty great garage rock, early 80s, pop rock, pop punk, 1981. It's an original press. So this, I have a side of this currently in rotation on the record selector. Then I got two Boomtown Rats records. Boomtown Rats, fantastic. Uh, this one has, I don't like Mondays on it, which I guess was their big hit. But uh, Boomtown Rats, just some really great um, 80s alternative new wave stuff. You might be familiar with Bob Geldof from Live Aid. Maybe you know him from that. You might know him as uh, the dude main character in Pink Floyd's The Wall. Shaved his eyebrows off, just went crazy. He was, you know, he was playing Sid. Sid, uh, oh boy, not Sid Vicious, but Sid Barrett. <laughs> anyway, Boomtown Rats. These are great. I have, uh, I think I've got this whole record up on the record selector right now. And I can't start talking. I just got home from work, so the cat has to make herself comfortable here. So I got this awesome uh, Atlantic, uh, the new age of Atlantic. It's a sampler from, I think 19, let's see what it is here. Uh, don't know that there's a date on this, but I would guess it's 1970, 1971. But I mean, Led Zeppelin, yes. Uh, it's everybody. It's so good. Buffalo Springfield's on here. Delaney and Bonnie. Cactus. The Cactus song. Long Tall Sally is on here. It's really great. And John Prine. I mean, how awesome is that? So, I've recorded this one. Um, I'll probably throw throw a side up there. It's like a greatest hits. It's pretty great. Never get tired of hearing any of those songs. Then I got the new mix. This is a uh, psychedelic rock band from about. Um, I would guess this is probably late 60s, maybe 1969. And it's just traditional psychedelic rock. It's really quite good. So I recorded this. I have not put a side of it up into airplay yet. Then I got a Blondie King Biscuit Flower Hour live performance. Um, I'm kind of a sucker for anything Blondie because she's hot. But to be honest, uh, this is not that great. Um, it really doesn't sound too great. Uh, okay, cat's got to get down. But it's great to look at, right? I mean, it's Blondie, so I'll take that all day long. Nice to have in the collection. This is one I got at I probably Half Price Books. Half Price Books seems to have a lot of these. Uh, I don't know where they're getting them from, but they're kind of bootleggy. Uh, but this is not a bootleg. It's on Mind Control Records. And uh, if you're a super diehard Blondie fan, you might get it. Um, I don't know if there's anything I'm going to put either on the show or online with that. I guess I might. What the hell? It's, it's always fun to hear. And this, Frampton Comes Alive, okay? We've seen it a million times. It's like the whipped cream and other delights of classic rock. It's in every stack of old records. But this one, sealed. I just discovered that today. I found it yesterday um, in, oh, man... It might have been in a Goodwill, or I can't remember exactly where I got this, but it was very cheap, and I saw the hype sticker. I took a quick gander at it, said no seam splits. Okay, that's a nice one. I'll bring that one home. Looked at it today, went to put a sleeve on it. It's sealed. This is a sealed copy. So that is really kind of cool. Very exciting with the hype. So it's like you can't open it. It's uh, 
it is what it is. And then I got another sealed record. It's always fun to find sealed records in the stacks, just uh, thrown in there with everything else. Tommy James and the Shondells, Money Money, with a nice hype sticker on it. Completely wrapped up, still sealed. It's mint. So that's a pretty fun record to have. So not sure if I'm keeping or selling. Uh, it's kind of fun to keep. I'm, I'm sure I'll sell them uh, to finance more purchases. So, um, and such as Moby Grape. The first Moby Grape record. Uh, this was the band cover, and it's banned because of this right here. See that? That was not kosher with the church ladies of the day. Also, the American flag was a little controversial at the time. Uh, it was a lot of counterculture, anti-war sentiment going on, and these guys were a part of it. So this was a band cover at the time. And this is a, uh, I think this is a 1984 reissue. Uh, something like that, but I got it at a nice price and uh, anytime I can add some Moby Grape to the collection It's good uh, still looking for an original of this, but happy to have that one in the collection. Then I got Krungbin Oh, this is so good. So so good. The universe smiles upon you So mellow this will take you to a nice place to be in your brain Krungbin so I uh, recently watched a uh, uh, Rig rundown on YouTube with uh, I can't think of his name but the guitar player for Krungbin and uh, it was really interesting he uses like two pedals and just gets this beautiful sound out of a pretty average guitar actually I believe and uh, it's a really good one if you're a guitar player and if you're interested in what these bands use to get their sound look up rig rundown um, on YouTube and any of your favorite artists will be on there. I found it interesting. The bass player, I can't think of her name, uh, but she has not changed her strings since the day she bought the bass, which is wonderful. I mean, they're a touring act. They're fantastic musicians. And anyway, pretty cool. Check it out. Then I found this. I thought it would be worth taking a chance on. Albert Collins, Etta James, and Joe Walsh jumped the blues away. So I don't know anything about it, but it starts with Walk Away as the intro. So I would imagine it's anything with Joe Walsh, I'll take it. Because Joe Walsh is one of the coolest dudes in rock and roll. Then I got this. Quite an unusual piece of music. Lou Reed Metal Machine Music. And this is... Uh, I'm over here. Where am I? There you go, Scott. This is a, a very valuable record. Um, it's very weird. And... Um, kind of hard to get into. I'm not really into it at all, but I'm into owning it because uh, it is, look this one up online. I was like, wow, can't believe that this is this price and I'll take it. So Metal Machine Music, Lou Reed, Instrumentals. It's just like basically a tone the whole time. I, I tried to listen to a little bit of it on Spotify and I was like, is this the same song for 60 minutes? But <laughs> it is, okay, but people like that. Um, anyway, everybody should like this, Sandy Denny. Uh, this one I actually purchased online. I cheated because uh, this one is not easy to find. I went into a few record stores looking for this one, and um, it is a beautiful, beautiful record, and Sandy Denny has one of the prettiest voices in folk music, like an old-fashioned waltz. So I'm really looking forward to getting this one on the channel and playing something towards the end of the, the mellow section of the show, towards the end of the uh, hour and 15 minutes that I do on that one. And then I got Psyche France, Volume 7, the 70s. I may have... I don't think I did a video where I presented this one. I got this one a month or so ago. But this is all... 70s psychedelic French music, and you know I love French music. I don't know what they're saying, but I like the way they say it, so I'm a big sucker for French go-go, French garage, and this will fit right in. <coughs> Pardon me, don't have COVID. I checked. I have allergies. And then I got this weird one, Bougarins. I found this at a local antique mall. Bougarins is a band. It's Decivio Honorico or something like that. It's as weird as it looks. 
it's kind of space rock and there's a few tracks on here that are actually pretty cool uh, kind of long jams grooves with some good guitar work and then there's a few tracks that are really really pretty awful they might fit well with the metal machine music uh, so this is this is for odd people so uh, my entire channel the record selector.com is for odd people so you, you'll be right at home and then I got Matt Dunkley six cycles this is basically modern classical uh, it's very beautiful good kind of if you want to meditate or some some shit like that you can get all new agey with this I'm not gonna put any of this I don't think I will put this on the record selector I might put a track or two it's very pretty music um, I have some Nils Fromm and Nils Fromm is also a modern composer and uh, it's really pretty music so maybe I'll put it up there or not it's good maybe I'll do it as a, a music bed for, to the record selector uh, something and then I found this really nice copy of Simon and Garfunkel original with uh, no tracks on the front cover uh, he's got the Tiger Beat magazine here these are all the things that you want to look for uh, to determine whether you have an original uh, Simon and Garfunkel this is a nice 360 mono so this is a good one for the collection uh, one that I've been looking for for a while don't mm, I think I've seen one or two maybe so uh, what else did I get? I got uh, Aretha, Young, Gifted, and Black. And I got this one because we recently saw Elton John up in uh, New York, which I mentioned on the show. And he played the Border song. And he mentioned that uh, Aretha had a hit with it before he did. So it was, I think he said something about how it was the first instance of uh, a piece of his music becoming popular with the masses I, that made it I may be wrong about that 1972 so he was around a little bit before then so uh, anyway she had a hit with it and it's a really nice song this is a great record anything Aretha you can't go wrong with what else did I get let's see um, uh, nothing fantastic I got uh, Depeche Mode songs of faith and devotion uh, what else oh this is kind of cool Neil Young, watch, watch tail cat. Neil Young, live on Sugar Mountain, February 1st, 1971. This is a bootleg. And I listened to uh, side one of it this morning, and it sure is a bootleg. I mean, obviously it was recorded on somebody's smuggled in uh, RCA tape deck. And it's, it's kind of funny. There's people coughing right next to you. It's, it's like you're in the audience. The audio is really muffled. It's not great. It's certainly no... Uh, uh, live at Massey Hall but it is a Neil Young bootleg I, it's the only Neil Young bootleg I have and being a huge Neil Young fan I'm glad to have it so if there's anything salvageable from it I will put it up on the record selector or play it on the show and that's really all I got now as far as the record selector goes had some serious audio issues through Sam Broadcaster can't use that product anymore that I paid hundreds of dollars for there's just something wrong with it. It's not mixing well with my system. I think it's Windows 11 that also contributed to the problem. So uh, the last two shows, episode 44 and episode 45, uh, were recorded through this horrible SAM broadcaster. They sounded awful. Uh, I've fixed that audio. Uh, so you can listen to those shows as they were meant to be heard. They sound great. I'm in the process of learning a new piece of software, Mix, and so when I get that figured out, I will attempt to broadcast live again. So until that time, tune into the recordselector.com and you'll get a 24-7 all live, all vinyl stream. Every selection has been copied from a record in this collection. So you can see it's a good collection and there's some great music up there. So thanks for watching.